Fit for Life Radio, episode number 174. Your hosts, Gary here. Will here. And today we're going to be talking about something we, we hear a lot. You still see on the interwebs and clients, confusion or curiosity along with protein. And a lot of times people will have heard something along the lines of, you should only eat, say, 20 or 30 grams of protein at a time in a meal. Because that's all your body can use. And anything after that is wasted. Yeah. So, you know, I'm gonna only only going to eat that and I will spontaneously combust if I eat more. <laughs> yeah. And, in the, and people are kind of scared out of eating too much protein, you know. And we know how beneficial it is to have that be a priority in your diet um, for a multitude of reasons. Not just, you know, we're talking about only, like, building muscle. Like, there's just so many benefits that come from getting enough of of the protein in your diet yeah so let's talk about first where it came from yeah so why why that's even a seed planted in people's minds hey 30 grams of protein so there was a small handful of studies done a while ago and they basically came to the conclusion that 20 grams of protein sufficiently stimulated protein synthesis. So basically it's like a, a trigger for your body to, you know, turn protein into muscle or, you know, start folding it into the, the, the muscle tissue and using it. Um, so it was just starting that process. That's basically what that 20, 25, 30 grams of protein yeah. does and, for you. And the reality is in for protein synthesis, like 20 grams kind of gets you most of it. And I think 40 maximizes it, yeah. but it's like massive diminishing returns. Um, but then really who ran with that was like the bodybuilding community. So that's why they'll maybe eat like 40 grams of protein every three hours uh, to maximize protein synthesis, right? Which if your job and your whole goal is like, hey, I got to maximize my muscle mass. Of course, like that should be a priority. Mm-hmm. But when we're talking regular people, it doesn't have to be that extreme. Yeah. And, and again, it's good to have some protein synthesis and it's nice to know that 20 to 30 grams provides kind of an upper limit of the amino acids. So protein that's needed. And that's the other thing. This also has to be this specific types of amino acids, right? So it needs to be the essential amino acids. So if you just have 30 grams of protein from just beans, that's not going to stimulate it's the protein complete. synthesis like 30 grams of protein from, uh, say, meat or yeah. dairy. So that's another thing to keep in mind, but don't want to get sidetracked. And so, yeah, so that's a good thing to know. But also, it is okay to eat more than that. Say you're not going to eat five or six meals a day and you happen to have a meal where, and say your goal will backtrack. Say your goal is to get 100 grams a day. That's still what we're going to want to get across the take home message is like getting your total amount for the day is most important. So if you end up only being able to get 100 grams of protein all in one meal, they will all be put to use. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be okay. Now it's one meal. So you're only going to get you're only going to get that one protein synthesis stimulus. Yeah. Right? Rather so than maybe three through the day. Rather than three or four. But if your goal is not to maximize the complete amount of muscle you can build and you're not, you know, it that doesn't matter per yeah. se. That, that one hit is still enough. Yeah. But you want – now, let's go with the thought of like, well, if you're like, I can only absorb 30. So then you, you only have that one meal where you eat protein. So you only have 30 grams a day. You are going to be missing out on a lot because the reality is we – Protein doesn't just isn't just important for protein synthesis. Yeah. Right. We need protein. It has helpful effects on uh, like the thermic effect. Right. Like it's it has helpful effects on our satiety. Um, it has helpful effects on imp- in a way. So those things improving weight loss. Right. Because it is more satiating. It does help us build muscle. Uh, but. But also to realize like our body uses amino acids and protein for almost for everything. Yeah. Like we're just built by amino acids. Yeah. You have to rebuild connective tissue. You have to grow hair, your your nails, your nails, your skin, right? The biggest organ on the body, like all this stuff requires 
protein. Yes. Uh, proteins are the essential building blocks of the human body. Everything. So put it all aside. If you eat 100 grams of protein in one meal, again, emphasize, if you eat 100 grams of protein in one meal, your body will find something to do with every single gram of that protein. Yes. And it can process it. Yeah. All it means is when you have a whole bunch at once, which can actually be a good thing, yeah. is it will be in your bloodstream longer because your body, you know, it's, yeah, if, if, if we gave you 30 tasks to do or 100 tasks to do, you would get them all done. It would just take you longer to do the 100 tasks. Yes. Same thing, right? So if you consume 20 grams of protein in a meal, the 20 is going to digest and get put to use way faster than the 100. But they it will all get done. Yeah. Like it's going to happen. Yep. And it is very important to hit that total daily protein goal. Yeah. So don't don't get caught in the weeds. Yeah, don't it, it, Again, if your goal isn't to maximize muscle, then just hit the goal. Like big picture, hit your daily, be cool with that. Yeah. That is absolutely enough. And keep in mind like protein isn't like fats and carbs to where it's just like your body wants to store it for later. Like yeah, is you know, well, the storage is technically like, you know, it builds muscle, yeah. but it doesn't your body's not going to hang on to it. And it's it's expensive to use as energy. Yeah, it prefers not to, so yeah. it finds something for it to do. So it wants to find something to build. Now, we're not necessarily suggesting eating 100 grams of protein in one meal Absolutely either. Absolutely not. <laughs> Because the problem with that is, like we just said, how important it is, say, to hit your daily protein goal. Well, if most people, if you have trouble eating that much protein in one meal, therefore, then you're not going to hit that goal. It's better to spread it out. Space it out. So any recommendation we give is more to make it easier to hit that daily goal, not to maximize protein synthesis. Yeah. Now, with that said, what we do recommend as a good starting point for most people in the middle of the bell curve is probably three meals a day, right? So you're trying to eat 100 grams of protein a day. Hey, guess what? That does happen to work out to three nice, evenly spaced meals of about 30 to 40 grams of protein. Yeah. It's going to put you in a good spot. And hey, also, by the way, it does give you three good feedings with optimal amounts for protein synthesis. Yeah. So we check the box three times a day. Yeah. Like and it's also, hey, typically normal portions they go with a, a normal meal. Yeah, so right? it's not like you're eating a whole yeah, pound eat of a chicken pound. breast. <laughs> yeah, it's like, f you know, five to eight ounces of meat, right? A cup of Greek yogurt. So um, that's, you know, why we recommend that for the masses. And, and it, like Will said, it checks all those boxes. So, and yeah, and then you don't have to worry like, oh my gosh, this meal is 40 grams of protein instead of 30. Does and I'm only going to, I'm going to waste 10 grams yeah, of this protein. Just, that is not the case. And again, in reality, I would say by then, if someone's is living by that and they're like, so they only eat 20 or 30 grams of, and then they end up under consuming protein, there could be short changing, like we said, for, for all those other benefits. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you're doing yourself a disservice by trying to follow that rule. So definitely don't, don't stress about that at all. Yeah. And realize too, like, man, like, and, and we share these studies and information for people, but most, of, again, it's, I, it's just, you want to look at the big picture of all the information gathered together. Right. And what happens a lot of times is like th that happened with this, it, it could be one or two studies and people just run with it. Right. Um, so always just listen to stuff and just, you know, it's, it's building a complete, novel so to speak right don't just go off of one page um so and that's what's wild is like people you know like we could have someone who like hey i heard this from a friend and it's like and then the friend is like they're not they're a dentist right yeah, or, or they're uh you know an accountant and that and it's like oh so like now or what are they expert on nutrition science yeah <laughs> like yeah, and it's like why, why are you even listening to this person yeah but we take we people tend to hear something like that and like just take it and run with it and then maybe it kind of scares you a little bit or makes you think twice and you know just realize not like things like that are always floating around yep especially with nutrition you know like oh don't eat carbs past seven things like that where that doesn't really matter 
you know, but if your friend tells you that you're going to probably think about it and, yep. you know, it might scare you into changing your nutrition or just being fearful of doing something, which we should never do when we're eating. Yep. So take home, do not worry to eat more than 20 or 30 grams of protein in a meal. It will all get digested. It will all get used. In fact, it's hitting that total protein goal is probably optimal. So for most people, yeah, we recommend aim for hundred grams a day, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the higher end is like one gram per body weight, but it depends on your body leanness. So, um, you know, w w w for the most part, an average height person, like if you're hitting 100 grams a day, say the average person's 150, 60 pounds um, to 200 pounds, you normally, most of the literature says as far as like muscle building, muscle gaining, muscle preservation, your body weight times 0.82 is... Yeah. as max as it needs to be right so if you know you take 150 times 0.8 times 0.88 what's that 130 if you know me you know i'm always on the run up early and home late so having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me what is in the cards is ag1 it's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals i need to perform I first gave AG1 a try because it I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and more, it's a powerful healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run up early and home late so having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me what is in the cards is ag1 it's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals i need to perform i first gave ag1 a try because it was, i wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine since drinking ag1 daily i've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics and more, it's a powerful healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. 120. 120. Yeah. Right? So um, we've, we found most people eat very low amounts of protein, like when, from looking at logs and when oh, we meet yeah. with people. So it's normally, hey, let's eat a little more. So if someone's eating 50, 60 a day, like 100 is double, right? Um, we normally also, too, we don't like to necessarily prescribe specific numbers. It can be range. You don't have to be perfect. Yep. So, yeah, what we tell our clients is 100 to 120 grams a day. 95% of the people for most of their goals, if you're hitting that, you're going to be in a you're great, gonna be great. great spot. Yeah. So, and that should be your goal. Try to eat 100 grams of protein a day. If you end up having to do that in one meal, if you're able to do it, 
not ideal, but cool. If you're still again, hitting the goal. <laughs> yeah, you're hitting that goal. So worry about that. It will all get used. Remember, we are not just eating protein for to, muscle to build muscle. That's it's a great you know use of it, but yeah. it's not at all the only use. Every it, we need it to rebuild, like we said, every everything. piece of you, skin, all that, organs. I mean, everything is made of protein. Yeah. We're also trying to help ourselves eat correct portions of all our food. Well, protein s- tends to be satiating, right? So that's another reason. Again, it helps us control our body weight by being more satiating. Um, so all those reasons do not make it harder on yourself. Do not get caught in the minutia of things no, like that. Not at all. And again, it's eventually was it's just kind of wrong, right? Like, mm-hmm. again, like what most people somehow hear and take away is you can only process 30 grams of protein at a time, right? But in reality, like we said, that came that comes from research and stuff for max trying to maximize protein synthesis. Yeah, that has your body do, using the protein. That, yeah, that has nothing to do with the digestion of protein or the different. usage of protein. That's just the specific usage of muscle protein synthesis yeah. right not total body consumption and usage of the protein yeah and then i think the flip side is worth talking about because sometimes people really worry about this like people worry about eating too much and like oh there's always a thing about oh it's going to shut down my kidneys or it's going to mm-hmm. do kidney damage if i have too much protein and the reality is like that's just not going to happen like the upper limit is something like did they, they've like, really found no upper limit. Was it? I think the test they've done is like 400 grams a day. Yeah. And even then, like, it's, and that's there's no a, real. Yeah. And I think the only reason it stopped at that was because it's hard. It's to, just uncomfortable to eat that much protein. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just not fun. Yeah, and you four, get full. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it will be like, what, four pounds of lean meat? Lean yeah. meat. Like, that's a lot. So, um, yeah, if they're doing tests where, like, that's the upper limit, then you eating 170 Grams of pro- like it's not going to do anything to you or your kidneys or anything like that. Yeah. So, and a lot of that, like we talk about the thermic effect of protein. What is it like a thirty thirty percent goes towards like the of the yeah. energy, um, like goes towards burning the protein and digesting it. Not burning, but digesting yeah. it and processing it and all of that. Yeah. So, in a way, to help that makes sense. And this is why your macronutrients matter, not just calories. Mm-hmm. So, say you have a diet that's one thousand. So you eat 2,000 calories of just carbs and fats. So you're just crushing Twinkies. Yep. 2,000 calories of Twinkies. Beautiful. The thermic effect of fat is none. So in a yeah. gram of fat is nine calories. The thermic effect of carbs is, is it's minimal. It's a little smaller. It's a little something, it's but uh, for the most part, 8%. Yeah. 8%. So, you know, we'll just say none. Yeah. It's minimal. Um, so yeah, so you consume two thousand calories of of Twinkies of of or, or of olive oil and um, white rice, right? So pure pure fat, pure carbs. <laughs> well, I want to use those because so they're, people they're don't just think it's like oh, it's because Twinkies are bad. Exactly. Right? Yeah, I think that's this, perfect. This goes the same for other food types yep, too. It's we're like just talking about the carbs the, and fats, the yeah. macronutrient. Then yeah, you will have consumed what what is going to get kind of processed through your body is is a thousand uh, two thousand calories. calories. Now, if you have eat 2,000 calories and say half, 50% of it is protein, so we'll say 1,000 calories, which 1,000 divided by four is 250. 250, so that'd be 250 grams of protein. And this is just an example for easy math, right? But so you what ends up kind of getting absorbed in the body, so to speak, would not be 2,000 calories. No. Because the thermic effect of protein is close to 30 percent meaning to digest the protein our body has to it burns calories to do it it has a higher thermic effect upwards of 30 percent so that means of the 1000 calories of protein you're basically getting 700 you're basically getting 700 your body's going to burn off 30 percent uh three uh yeah 30 percent 300 calories calories um to process to process it right so then of that total 2000 calories you ate of protein carbs and fats with half being protein it's really like you only ate 
1700. 1700, right? So now if you're trying to lose weight or control, you see where having a bit higher protein diet makes it easier because you still had to consume all that food, but the thermic effect is yeah. higher. The, the net is way the, Yeah, the better. net is lower. So that is a benefit of consuming protein, right? So there you go. Yeah, so just do the protein, man. All right. That's well, really all we're after. Hopefully that's, you know, something maybe if you've heard or been confused about, gives you a little clarity. Yeah. Yeah, we try. We try our best. Yep. There's a million myths like that that yep. and also perpetuate. So people don't, you know, stew on it or feel some kind of way. Like we mentioned, hey, like to maximize the protein synthesis, it needs to be essential amino acids. And we mentioned how, you know, meat or dairy. Now you can get that without. For sure. Meat and dairy you can do it as a vegan, but you have to combine foods. You got to have right? your combination. So you couldn't get it from just rice or just beans. But if you combine beans or rice, mm -hmm. you, you'll get the protein. It's a timeless combo. Um, but you have to, but I'm sure as you're thinking, well, beans and rice are also come high in carbs, high in carbs. So now to get, say the hundred grams of protein, you have to go through a bunch of other calories. Yeah. So it gets harder to then keep your calories down and keep your protein up. Yeah. And the reality is, and this is a known fact, the plant protein still also isn't kind of as, I don't know the right word to use, powerful or as... It's not as um, bioavailable. Bioavailable. So not, you don't utilize as much of it as you would a um, an animal-based protein. So then, the hun say 100 grams of protein from animal foods and 100 grams of protein from plant foods aren't equal e no. either well, on a one-to-one. -one. So you, you you probably then need to get more protein on a plant-based vegan yeah. vegan diet. But then, like we just said, it gets harder. It comes at the expense of carbs and extra Because your calories start to get up there. So, you know, if you're a, a bigger person and you have a higher calorie demand, it's normally e way fine and easier. If you're smaller, it gets really hard. It's but, so that's where if you're difficult. going to be plant-based, uh, vegan, and you're smaller. You got to like, do the work and really. You got to. Well, you almost. You're going to have to resort to vegan protein powders. Mm -hmm. And then like tof tofu. Tofu is probably. Because that's a complete protein. That's a complete protein. But again, not to like discourage anyone. Just saying like these are these are things you want yeah, to be aware of. Yeah. Like you do, you know, need to, to work on it if you are trying to do it plant based. Yeah. So. And again, like 100 grams of protein plant based. Or if we even, mm -hmm. you know, a, account for maybe the difference. 120 grams. Mm -hmm. Not the yeah. end of the world. Yeah. And to spin back around on the original thing of like the 20 grams of protein for protein synthesis, it actually makes for a good rule of when you do eat, you probably want to try to get at least 20 grams of protein so that you can have this. That effect. Protein stimulus. Yeah. Uh, Instead of, hey, if you have 10 grams of protein, it's not, it's not, not going to trigger that. Like not you're not getting it. that effect. So yeah. why not in a meal get enough to where we're getting this process to happen? Yeah. So the real reality is like don't look at it as a cap. Look at it as a minimum. Look at it as a minimum, yep. Yeah, I think that's actually a, a great way to do it. So then you have a range, but your minimum, you're always hitting every meal. Yep. I think that's actually a way better way to frame it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Protein minimum. Yeah, so that's why when you go and you – then you have all these feedings where you just eat some Cheetos and Fritos. You're not, you're not, like, you're not even getting the protein – uh, minimum threshold nope. to get that stimulus, right? So isn't it funny how – People won't bat an eye at that, but then they'll they'll like, oh my gosh, I ate more than thirty grand, you know. Yeah, like that's what scares them. <laughs> not like, like, well, how many meals do you have where you're where you're not even hitting this threshold? Yeah, where you just ate a whole bag of Cheetos. And you you're not I mean? you're not concerned about that, you know, you know, or all the you know things we struggle with. Yeah, and and but then all of a sudden you're doing good. And you're, you're doing eating, this positive. Thing. Yeah, you're eating your protein, and then you get just tripped up. On you like, get scared. Oh my gosh, am I eating too much? Right, but yet we'll crank away some some bear claws and yeah we'll never worry about damn like croissants. did i just yeah. eat a thousand calories worth <laughs> yeah. of baked goods that's never exactly. a thought you go out to eat and crush three thousand calories of pancakes and syrup yeah and don't think that's twice nothing. and then you eat 35 grams of protein You're like oh my god is this gonna be turned into <laughs> fat or is my body gonna use this it just don't worry about that please mm. eat protein to your even, heart's even content even think about this 100 grams of protein so people will like go crazy like oh my gosh that's so much that's only 400 calories yeah that's the craziest part about it. Calories. That's it. That's like, what? That's a pound, pound of chicken breast, yeah. essentially. That's four scoops of protein powder. Yep. 
it's a that's two, cra- uh, it's a crap ton of eggs. <laughs> 30, 30, 32 ounces of Greek yogurt. Yeah, they have thirty two ounces. Yeah, that's well, a, is that a whole tub? Yeah, yeah. That is a lot of Greek yogurt to eat, but oh, you, dude, I could you ever ate a whole? T- it's you, you're like you're you are full. I usually like the most I'll do is two servings, so it's like a cup and a half. Yeah, I don't you, go beyond that normally. You are full, or I'm yeah. I, even at that, I'm like, man, I'm kind of sick of eating this yogurt. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't imagine doing a whole tub. Nope. I couldn't imagine the night and day after. That's a it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of yogurt, dude. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> your lactose, your <laughs> lactose enzymes better be. They better be top notch, <laughs> top baby. Not. Oh, man. All right. Well, that's all we got. That's all we got. I'm going to go house the whole thing of yogurt (laughs) in the meantime. Thanks for listening. All right. We'll catch you next time. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.